for years now. If you wanted to start with the RC and FPV hobby, your first choice radio was the Flysky i6. And I know it, because the Flysky i6 was my first radio six years ago. Both then and now, for about 50 bucks, you are getting the radio that maybe is not the best radio if they work, however, has the pretty decent range of one kilometer, usually no problems, and in most of the cases, just works fine. Now, however, the super cheap Flysky i6 has the competition, and the competition is the Radio Master T8 Lite, which, believe it or not, is around 10 bucks cheaper. I'm Paweł Spechalski, and today let's find out what the Radio Master put in this El Cheaper radio. Oh, and this video has a sponsor, and the sponsor of this video is me, or rather my second YouTube channel, the PS After Hours YouTube channel, and the link is also in the description, it's not about the RC, it's about the open source programming, do-it-yourself, Arduino, ESPs, and all the other things I'm interested in that are not RC and FPV. If you dig those topics, check it out and please subscribe. But now, let's tear this radio down. This is the T8 Lite radio. It looks exactly like the T8 Pro radio. However, something to remember. This is not an open TX radio. You cannot connect this external LCD to this radio. And it works only with the FR Sky receivers. It does not have the multi-protocol module and will talk only with the D8 and D16 FreeSky receivers. Just like the more expensive and advanced brother, the external build quality of the radio is actually pretty nice. The gimbals are the same gimbals as before, so they are plastic and they feel okay, nothing fancy but usable. The clamshell is pretty nice, the mold quality is also pretty Pretty nice. You can see that this is a fresh mold, nothing that was used and abused for years. And both halves of the clamshell are actually pretty nicely fed together because the radio is light but stiff, and although maybe the low weight doesn't give you this nice feeling of the quality in them, you cannot really twist or bend this thing, nothing squeaks or scratches in the process of using the radio. And this usually is a sign of the that the things are not that bad as the price might suggest. So far, kudos for Radio Master for really having a nice quality exterior build. But what's more interesting, let's see what's inside and let's keep remembering that this is not OpenTX and most probably they did have to make some kind of the sacrifices to have the price as low as it is for this radio. Okay, I removed the screws, but I still have no idea how to open this thing. Ah yes, there are some small latches over here and you actually have to use a lot of force or something like a lever to be able to open this thing. I personally don't like this kind of the solutions because after you disassemble something for the first time it always leaves a mark but this is why the radio actually feels so nice in your hands and this is the why both sides of the clamshell fit together so nicely okay it was really a long and problematic process of disassembly so we have two lipos one in each grip interesting interesting way of solving this thing but well the radio is so small that most probably it was just super hard to fit one 800 uh, 18, lipo for example over here so we have two one ss okay let's disconnect that and let's see what's below because it looks like that if not counting this PCB, there is not really that much into it. Okay, it looks like I have to remove the gimbal connectors before I can proceed with this assembly. And man, those are tightly connected wires, which is by the way a good sign, one more time. However, I already see that radio... Radio Master, one more time, use those flat wire cables. This is never a good sign, because those things like to disconnect from time to time. Uh, but okay, one, the second one, so the switches are off. And, oh, the antenna 
Originally I was under the impression that the antenna is the integrated antenna, uh, some kind of the PCB, but no, you see there is one single 2.4 GHz sleeve dipole over here. So let's uh, remove also this wire and let's see what's inside. And inside there is almost nothing. The board is mega minimalistic. There is really like nothing there and seems like the majority of the board is really to give some kind of structure or maybe the platform for other things because over here we have there are no markings but this is the CC2500 radio module that is responsible for the communication and this allows you to talk to the FreeSky D8 and D16 receivers. Here is the power section, here is the buzzer and the MCU from which they removed all the markings. The markings were scratched, uh, so we cannot really find out what it is. And I don't even want to guess what it might be. It doesn't look like the STM and it doesn't look like any Atmega, so maybe it's peak. This is running the Radio Master own software and we will just not know what's inside of this. And I'm even not sure that you can update the firmware on this thing. Remember what I said about the minimalistic uh, design of the PCB? On this side we only have the connectors and this section that probably allows you to connect the external connector for the original programming of this thing. And the one button that handles the binding. And this is all. Standard CC2500 radio section non-standard, absolutely non-standard MCU that drives the whole radio and this is all. I think the detent on the switches is fine. They are teeny tiny, but they do not feel super cheap in your uh, in your hands. The gimbals definitely feel cheaper, and this is an interesting choice because if this is for the beginner radio, then indeed the decision to make the throttle kind of stiff, and to be honest, even the sticks are kind of stiff on the springs, I think this is a good idea. The gimbals are fully, of course, plastic, because because what to expect more and we have the gimbals itself they look like the potentiometer gimbals this is not the hull effect but really the price but at least looks like they are they have bearings they have bearings so this is not the cheapest possible uh, friction bearing so actually it's not really that bad for the price this is definitely the the compromise that has to be made overall um like i said super minimalistic and because uh, this is super minimalistic that you actually use only with two buttons the one on the bottom side that allows you to bind and the one on the top side that allows you to turn this on and off they are pulling the basic functions of the radio. You cannot change the mapping of the channels because this is one, two, three, four for the gimbals and then four channels for the switches, which those are always three positions and those are only two positions. But besides that, I think it really does everything that it has to do. So far, absolutely no red flags. And if you just want to use this thing with some kind of whoops of small airplane when you do not really need the open TX, then look looks like apparently it makes absolute sense. It also looks like that if you want you can actually add the external antenna for this thing because if you are proficient enough with the soldering iron you can just remove this uh, antenna from the CC2500 module, get yourself the SMA pigtail so I think this, this bracket over here will accept the standard SMA pigtail no problem, connect this to this and attach the external SMA antenna absolutely no problem. So if you probably need a better antenna for the slightly bigger range then you have the option to modify the radio by yourself at home. I think that's all for today, thank you very much for watching and happy flying! And now like every other teardown I will have to assemble this thing and test. Oi.